Hello, everyone. I'm there, but not really, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Looks cool. <laughs> I don't know. I just actually figured this out by accident when I set up the stream that I'm barely visible with the lights turned off just because of the screens, you know, lighting me up. Thought that was a uh, pretty interesting, really mysterious even though this stream isn't mysterious at all i don't think but anyway hello and welcome to a new album listening party i'm looking forward to this one. Oh boy i am i hope you are looking forward to this too and yeah oh okay now with the uh, french name again uh berangerie 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 i'm i'm really sorry <laughs> basically butchering your name by the way uh, oh, before I forget little slipknot reference here uh, three two one Wow that's bright hi hi everyone Berangerie 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 uh, anyway no matter what your name is pronounced like thanks for uh, watching and for tuning in of course you're very much so looking forward to this. That's awesome. That is really cool. Uh, same, 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 same. Yeah. Blah. Same, same. It's been a while. I mean, not with the album listening parties as a whole, but with uh, a little album reaction of Rammstein, you know. A uh, Rammstein album listening party. The last one and the first one, the only one we did so far, was for Sehnsucht, their second album. And today we're gonna listen to their fifth album, Rosenrot. And uh, yeah, uh, it's been a while. Tim Burton's uncle. Hi. Hi, Tim Burton's uncle. Maybe Tim Burton himself is watching as well. I don't know. Carl Creighton. Hi. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. That is greatly appreciated, as always. You know that. You know that. Ah. By the way, also wearing my Rammstein tour shirt because I saw them live this year for the first time and uh, it was a blast to say the least you know hope I'm loud enough and everything and the person uh, whose name I can't really pronounce because I can't read kanji I'm really sorry about that but you know that of course because you're not a new one here uh, love this album so much I do too um, Manifesto Art, hi! Thanks for tuning in. How are you doing, guys? Thank you for showing up. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, so the stream should run smoothly, I think, from what I can see. You know, if there should be any problems with the stream during the stream, feel free to tell me in the comments because some things I can't really, you know, see or notice while I'm streaming, for instance, the audio levels and everything uh, in terms of the music right here. Which in a way, call me Fan Jesus. Hi. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. I hope so too. I'm doing very well. Thanks for um, wishing that and for asking, for hoping, basically. Uh, I love this album too, but I love all the ones I've listened to so far. So that's cool. Marco Seneca. Howdy, folks! Hi, Marcus! Or as we Germans actually say, Markus. You know, kind of similar, but slightly different pronunciation. Benjamin Landon! L Landon, I'm sorry. I'm always, you know, whenever I read your name, Benjamin, I don't know why, but I, I keep dropping the N in your last name. I figured. Benjamin Landon, not Ladden. Good weekend for everyone. Same to you guys, of course. Ah, this is so cool. Thanks for tuning up. Tuning up, showing up, tuning in, tuning in, showing up. Everything in between and in general. You know what I mean. So, uh, real quick, before we're going to start listening to the album as a whole, I want to explain, and I need to explain, I guess, how this album reaction works. So, we're about to listen to the new, to the new, to the full Rammstein album Rosenrot, 
in its entirety from the first song to the last song and we're gonna do it in a an album listening party way which means because I'm unable to really include the actual music in this video or respectively in this live stream hi to everyone watching this afterwards on YouTube that is greatly appreciated as well um, because I can't really do that because I would risk getting this video blocked and that's not the purpose of making a video um, we're gonna do it this way don't you worry at all because there's an easy workaround and that is why as you can see in the chat for instance and also in the video description for this video for this live stream there is a list of streaming possibilities you know streaming providers where you can stream this album along and synchronize because before each song is going to start, I'm going to count you in, you know, I'm going to say three, two, one, play. Then I'm going to hit play. You can also see where I'm at in the song down here, you know, before the stream I actually listen to some Porcupine Tree. Ah, love that band. Just saw them live last week, by the way, in Oberhausen. Great concert. Um, anyway, uh, you can see that here as well. So. In case you actually you know have a certain delay or you want to sync up again you can do that via this thingy right here you know um, the duration bar or whatever it's called actually uh, I guess there's a proper term for this uh, but I I don't know uh, anyway you know what I mean and after each song that's very important after each song we're gonna take a little break like maybe one two three minutes at a max I guess and talk about the song and I'm gonna give an English translation of the song's title and of one or two lines out of the song you know usually the song's chorus and what they actually mean and what may be interesting about those words and expressions linguistically speaking so this is basically a mixture of an album listening party album reaction and a German language lesson that is how this works okay okay um, Stepan Salai. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Sorry if I butchered your name, of course. Got to see Rammstein in Los Angeles and was fire. Yes, fire. Fire. I saw them live in Dusseldorf this year, in June, which was really awesome. On June 19th, I think it was. Yeah, day after my dad's 60th birthday and that was basically his birthday present you know that the both of us you know me and my dad we actually went to see Rammstein and he didn't know at all you know he didn't even saw it coming in the slightest he didn't think of it and then we drove there and I actually made a video about that you know what it's really like to watch a Rammstein show I guess it's called if I can recall and uh, it was a great show it was a such a great great unforgettable adventure basically you know uh, in Germany it's Stefan ah I see I see see that's also interesting you know the, the same name but in different forms um, regarding you know or depending on in which country you live or which language you speak that is so cool I'm so excited that my first listening party is for this album Best present ever. Yes, I think so too. And I was really lucky that I actually got the tickets, but more about that, if you want to find out more about that, um, how that all came about, uh, watch the video. I can link it to you in a second, and then we're gonna start in a moment. Not wasting time, of course. Um, Rammstein. Why? What a Rammstein. There it is. Okay. I'm going to provide you with the link. So, what I'm also going to be doing a little bit, I try not to do it as much, but I may do it. I may talk a little bit over the songs, you know, when there is something that's happening in the song, and before I forget, you know, I want to get it out. But I try to do it not too much can't guarantee any anything you know because of course this is a reaction so I'm gonna react to it just so you know um, 
And of course, as I've said before, um, this video, similar to all my other previous album listening parties, for instance, to the new Ghost album, to the or for the new Florence and the Machine album, for um, what is it, the new Alter Bridge album, I did one for Sehnsucht by Rammstein, I also did one, uh, and a few more, Post Malone even, you know. Um, yeah, you can watch them all on my channel as well if you want to. But now, it's time for the mighty R, Rammstein. <laughs> the trilled R, guys. Okay, so. Let's get everything ready. Oh, one more thing. Very important. Because I thought, you know what? Since we're listening to Rosenrot, the album Rosenrot, I need to drink something that is fitting to the album's title, I guess. <laughs> Which is why I'm drinking this red wine. Because the album's title Rosenrot actually translates to the red of roses, or literally rose red. It's a compound word, you know, compound term. Rosenrot, the rose red, the color rose red, or the type of red that is similar to the type of, or the color of roses, you know, Rosenrot. And it's also an alliteration in itself, basically. So it is a freaking cool title, I think. Cheers to you guys. Thanks for tuning in once again. And uh, with that being said, mm. Rosenrot, oh Rosenrot. Tiefe Weine sind nicht still. If you know what I mean. Okay, guys. Putting the headphones on. Jaden Light Knight, thanks for tuning in. And Hefalsartex, I think. Hi, thanks for tuning in as well. I really appreciate you guys being here. You know that. So, I'd say, without further ado, I'm gonna change the audio sources for me real quick. Uh, what's cheers in German? Um, I only know cheers and stolt. Uh, stolt. Um, Prost. Prost. That would be the most common term. Prost. You know, cheers. Prost. With an O. Nice German O. Prost. <laughs> okay, everyone. Uh, looking forward to doing this. And um, we're about to start. Hope you are ready. As I've said before, you can find links to the album resources up there. Martina, hi, thanks for tuning in. And you can also find the links uh, to the album streams in the video description, if you may get lost at some point. So, without further ado, this is the album Rosenrot by Rammstein. Once again, after each song, we're gonna take a little break of one or two minutes we're going to talk about the song's title and maybe one or two words or lines out of the song and what they actually mean in English. So that is how it's going to work. And of course, after we've listened to the album as a whole, I'm also give my entire album review opinion thingy, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I hope that's all right for you. Um, let's begin with the first song. Oh, I'm going to have to deactivate shuffle uh, um, um, we're gonna listen to the first song of, of the album which is called benzene oh yeah in three two one play haven't listened to this in a while actually so i've listened to the album before it's not a blind reaction not a first listen reaction, but I haven't listened to the album as a whole in quite a while. It's very mysterious.
I actually have to say I really like the sound of the snare on this album and also on Reise Reise, the drum production. Dum 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 dum, that little riff there, you know, staccato like moment, really giving more dyna dynamic and propelling the song forward. Einen Kraftstoff. Oh no, no Sagetta there. Herz und Nieren sind Motoren. I love the bridges in Rammstein songs, you know, the quirky keyboard sounds. It's it's cool every single time. Pam 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 pam. Nice tom work. And stop. That was Benzin, the first song of of Rammstein's fifth album, Rosenrot. What an opener, as you guys say as well, you know. It is basically a perfect opener track because it has the power, it has everything that makes a Rammstein song unique in a way and recognizable, memorable. Um, what I really like is as I've said before, and I also like that on the sister album to this one, Reise Reise, the album that came before, you know, the fourth album, um, I really like the snare sound. I don't know what it is, you know, it's, it has a certain reverb, um, it has a certain f oomph to it, you know, and it's a great, great sounding album, I think, overall, and also this song. And what I what I always found interesting about the song is that even though it is melodic, it has a certain harshness to it, you know, a certain aggressiveness, which also fits the song's lyrical content, I guess, because, you know, it, it plays with various metaphors of things that may give you energy, but that also might lead to you being, you know, out of control or, you know, really... Um, how you call it in English, actually, you know, uh, hitting um, or, you know, driving really fast on the highway and everything. Because this is a song that is basically suited for that. Because the song's title, Benzin, translates to gasoline, fuel, actually. So, funnily enough, and I don't know, I came across that when I actually um, translated the basic line in the chorus which is Gib mir Benzin, give me fuel. Which, of course, as someone who may know some metal music in general, may remind you of a certain Metallica song, Fuel, 
Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ugh. You know, <laughs> that, that one. Great song, by the way. Um, I don't know if that is a certain, like, really indirect little reference on purpose. Maybe it's just coincidence, I don't know. But I actually liked that coincidence. So, um, at some point, the lyrical eye says, you know, as fleece durch meine Venen, it runs through my veins. Uh, so, the lyrical eye basically is fueled and powered by gasoline, by fuel, by life energy, by something that is energetic. Um, and he, he, well, he, uh, it, the lyrical eye, because you can argue it's a man singing this, because it's Till, but Till, you know, even though he is the singer, and that is really important, because people often confuse this, just because Till Linnemann is singing this, doesn't mean he is the lyrical eye, the storyteller of the song. He can be that, but he doesn't have to be that, you know. It may just be a fictitious person, you know, and no one knows that, that person. It doesn't even exist, maybe, you know. That is the lyrical eye. And the lyrical eye actually says they don't need this, they don't need, you know, cocaine, cocaine, they don't need other... Um, substances to really get them hyped up to get get them or to make them feel really alive and really motivated really you know um fresh and open-minded in a way maybe it also has some like drug references here and there i guess you could argue that you know feeling high and everything but in a way benzene fuel is what gets them going of course, don't do that at home, children, you know, boys and girls and everyone, because fueling yourself, filling yourself with fuel, fueling yourself is fooling yourself. I actually came up with that on the spot right now. <laughs> it's, uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, it's das Benzin, the gasoline, or the fuel. By the way, I might, the, the, um, the cam might bump a little bit here and there when I'm typing, just so you know. Um, Gib mir Benzin. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Great song, even though I guess it, to some degree it it's quite underrated, I think. When, when I think of, you know, Rammstein opener tracks, I wouldn't think of Benzin right away. I would rather think of Reise Reise. I would rather think of Mein Herz brennt and all those songs, you know. And but not really Benzin, even though it's it's a cool opener, as I've said before. So definitely a great great track. And I also liked one last thing about this song before we're gonna move on to the second one. I also really liked the little hints and details with the double bass. That is something that I always appreciated about Rammstein when they do it. On their past two albums, they haven't really done that all too much. In fact, I think that was when I actually reacted to Sehnsucht. I was thinking about, uh, or maybe I, I also reacted to Zeit, by the way, F totally forgot about that. I could be wrong, but from my memory, I don't think there's a single moment on their self-titled album and neither on Zeit, where there is like a real double bass pattern going on for, you know, a few bars at least. I don't think there is. And, you know, that I don't want to evaluate that, you know, or, you know, s express that as something that is either positive or negative. I'm just stating that, you know, as an observation. And on this album and during this time period of Rammstein, I feel they were a bit more active when it came to double bass patterns and double bass uh, arrangements, which I always like, you know. I'm, I'm a fan of double bass when it's used in a tasteful amount. If there is a song and double bass runs throughout the whole song nonstop, not really creative, not really that captivating to me. Um, so they did something really great um, uh, and very well actually with this song in regards to that. Anyway, let's move on to the second song, Mann gegen Mann.
Mann gegen Mann. Bei Rammstein in 3, 2, 1, Play. Also, very rare, rare that a song begins with a bass, in a way. <laughs> Always liked the flow of the lyrics here and the vocals. So little details, you know, playing with the channels left and right. Very nasty riff. There's also something that Till doesn't do very often, that he actually doubles himself, you know, with a higher voice on top. Always sounds really cool. Dum, 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 dum. And now to the highlight of the song, at least for me personally, tonally. Love the rhythm there. Down, 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 down. It's a strong suit of Rammstein, to be honest. You know, the bridge sections, they always deliver. Even though you could also argue that this is a bridge section, se se section, maybe there is even two of them. Kein Gleichgewicht. That's a cool snare sound again. And stop. That was Mann gegen Mann by Rammstein. And you know, that ending, it's it's only like two or three seconds at a max. But you know, that, that double bass pattern right at the end, it's such a nice climax, you know, musically speaking, of course. It's, it's just the icing on the cake in a way, you know, a great way to end the song with power, with the same energy that runs throughout the song, basically, even though it starts quite quietly and also has some quiet moments. And in fact, that also fits to what Marcus actually said in the chat, because he says, I feel like the quiet moments make the harder ones hit even harder. That is true. I definitely agree with that. And that is also something that I appreciate about music, not just Rammstein, but in general, when music does that, and, uh, you know, musicians, when they have a feeling for dynamics. And Rammstein certainly have that feeling, because as this song is a perfect example in a way because it starts quiet and then it actually builds and then there's a f 
the first climax that is the chorus you know or you know the little lick in between two verses basically um bob fog nozzle hi thanks for tuning in and don't you worry uh we've just finished listening to the second song out of 11 so there's much more to come um anyway man gegen man uh which it's an interesting song and i think i don't know if they actually would write that song nowadays because it basically is you know really in, sh in short put put shortly and short and simple basically that's what i want to say it basically is a song about homosexuality i guess at least that is uh, what it always seemed to me uh, because um and also what's interesting is that the the the, the, the lyrical eye basically tells their experiences and shares their thoughts about being homosexual you know and how other people perceive them being that uh mein geschlecht schimpft mich verräter you know my gender uh, my biological sex my gender um calls me a traitor uh ich bin der albtraum aller väter i'm the nightmare of all fathers implying that fathers many fathers actually may expect your son you know to become a father himself you know uh, at a later point in life and you know people that are gay of course they can adopt children in a way but um biologically speaking you know what i mean it's not possible you know um that is basically and i think Considering this was released in 2005, which is 17 years ago, even though back then things were, you know, becoming even more and more open and tolerant and, um, you know, people became more and more tolerant, increasingly tolerant with, you know, homosexuality in, in general and those things. Um, I think it, it still was a little bit different to compare to, you know, these days and nowadays, I guess, I feel. So that is why I think maybe this song wouldn't actually raise too many eyebrows if it were published or recorded nowadays. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's a great song, even though one that I usually don't really think about. You know, this album, it's interesting, and I'm going to go more in depth uh, on that after we've listened to all the songs, but this album contains quite a few really cool songs actually which i feel sometimes get lost when you think about you know the the best or the typical or the the most well-known rammstein tracks with a few exceptions for instance the next song rosenrot because it was a single but apart from i mean man gegen man was a single as well and so was benzin but when i think of rammstein singles there are many other tracks that come to my mind before i actually think about these and that is not to say that I dislike the songs, quite the opposite. I don't know why that is, actually. I, I never really found a proper answer. Maybe you're feeling the same. Maybe you're feeling completely different about this. I don't know. Feel free to tell me in the comments, of course, and also in the chat right now for people that are watching watching this live. Um, it's, it's really fascinating. Tiffany, hi. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Tiff. How are you doing? Uh, anyway, uh, the song's title, fitting to what I just said, translates to man against man, man gegen man. For der Mann, singular, die Männer, plural, the man. And gegen, against. And then there is the line, I mean, there are many interesting lines in the song, actually. Uh, and I guess at some point I will actually translate the whole song. Dom Meso, hi. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, one line, which is also an idiom, actually, or a saying, gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. I think the English expression that is the equivalent to this one that I came up with, I could be wrong, is birds of a feather flock together you know 
gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. Basically meaning equal, literally speaking, equal and equal like to be close to each other. You know, they like to be among each other. Gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. So, another one, a very good example of Till Lindemann using German sayings in Rammstein lyrics. I've also made a video about that, by the way, if you want to find out more about that. German sayings and expressions in Rammstein lyrics, sometimes even altered a little bit. But here, it basically is a German saying, you know, gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. Birds of a feather flock together. My, maybe an English equivalent, even though people of the same kind stick together. Yes, that's basically it, yeah. Uh, and literally speaking, it translates to equal and equal like to be close to each other, I guess you could say. So definitely an interesting song. And um, yeah. With that being said, let's continue with song number three, the title track. Rosenrot, oh Rosenrot, oh yeah. The Red of Roses once again, or if you want to translate it as a compound word, which it is, and as a single term, and literally speaking, it means rose red. You know, roses red, basically. Um, no worries, uh, Dom. Uh, and Tiff, don't you worry at all either. Um, we're going to listen to the third song. You can find links to the album, you know, album streams up there in the chat, pinned up, or in the video description if you want to tune in because uh, this is a synchronized album listening party event, which means I'm listening to the music and you're listening to the music on your own, but synced, you know, I'm going to count you in for each song and then we're going to talk about the songs. Uh, Berangeri says, uh, for, for my part, I am actually aware of loving all the songs in this album, both in individually and as a whole, with one exception, but whatever. Okay, hmm, interesting. I mean, feel free to tell me later on, maybe, I guess, uh, after we've listened to all of the tracks, because that may be a fitting moment for that. Anyway, let's continue with song number three, the title track, Rosenrot, in drei, zwei, eins, play. Once again, starting with the bass, by the way and a great bass tone. Love this song. It's one of the most poetic Rammstein songs, lyrically speaking. And it's really simplistic, you know, minimalistic, which is also something new and different compared to benzene, for instance. Just a bass drum. Pam, pam, pounding. And now with a snare. And the whispered vocals. Don't. And once again, you know, double layered till, the normal till and a higher line, which is something that he does from time to time, but not too often, I don't think. I also like the guitar tone on this album. It's, it's, it's distorted and it's angry, but it's not overly, you know, distorted. Oh, 
Also, that is something that I love about Till singing. He can have like a speak singing style, which sounds as if as if he just says something. And sometimes he goes a little bit lower and, you know, gives a little bit more verve. Bekommt sie auch. Very expressive singing. Rosenrot, oh Rosenrot, tiefe Wasser sind nicht still. And stop. That was Rosenrot of of Rosenrot by Rosen uh, Rammstein, Rammstein Rot, Ro Rosen Rammstein. Uh, anyway, uh, great song to be honest. It's one of the most underrated songs on the album, I think. Even though I know it's maybe a hot take because it was a single, and it has a great music video and everything, but compared. Maybe not on this album only, but compared to other Rammstein singles, I feel like this one sometimes gets overlooked because it may not have the energy many people like and want to hear of Rammstein. But you know what? I just like music in general. And to me, it doesn't matter if it's like really highly energetic. I always like that, of, of course, but it doesn't have to be all the time. And this song is like mid-range powerful, I guess. Also because of the tempo, but also, you know, just in general, the overall vibe of this song. And it really fits and works because as I've said before, the lyrics are really poetic in a way. The lyrical content is basically, you know, um, there there are elements of Der Erlkönig in this, which is a famous German poem by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, I'm actually going to talk about this song more in depth at a later point in time. So I'm not going to reveal all too much yet. However, this song also is another great example of Tillinemann using German sayings and implementing, implementing them into the lyrics. In this case, it's interesting, you know, it's it's even more interesting, I should say, because it's not only a German saying that he includes in the lyrics, it's also that he twists the meaning, basically, or he changes the word order of the original saying in this one. So, what he says is, Tiefe Wasser sind nicht still. Deep waters aren't silent or still, you know. Um, even though the German saying goes, Stille Wasser sind tief. Stille Wasser sind tief. Still waters are deep. Implying, you know, something that may seem calm on the surface may be really explosive underneath. There are Hidden character traits in people, for instance. People that seem really introverted and calm on the outside, on the surface, may be or may have the potential to be really aggressive in certain situations or really come out of them in a positive way even, you know. I guess you can interpret it both ways, positive and negative. Stille Wasser sind tief. Silent waters or still waters are deep, you know. There is more to a situation or there are there's more to people than meets the eye at times an interesting thought i think and i guess you know i don't know if you know some people like that i do and i always find that highly fascinating when that happens when you have someone who's really like you know almost shy 
and then they go out of themselves in a positive way for instance you know they for instance when they you're at a party and you know that person is drinking uh, and they loosen up a little bit because they drink a little bit and then they actually you know really dance around on uh, the dance floor and everything to the music that's playing uh, i've seen that happen before uh, and i was really like wow okay i didn't expect that at all stille wasser sind tief you know silent waters or still waters are deep and um yeah it's i i really like the calm nature of the song and i don't know the the simple and once again minimalistic approach to the melody and melodic progression the arrangement and so on you know it's very simple but I don't mean that in a bad way because it works. It draws you in. And it basically leaves more space for the lyrics, I think, because they may be on the foreground or, you know, here. And they, because they are so expressive and very poetic in terms of the choices of, you know, the choice of words and how to express certain things and everything. So Rosenrot is an overall cool song, I think. I really like this one. Always liked it from the beginning uh, when I heard it for the first time. Uh, the Red of Roses, once again, Rosenrot. Um, and another line that is really interesting, of course, Tiefe Brunnen muss man graben, wenn man klares Wasser will. You know, deep wells must be dug if you want clear water. Which may also correlate with what I just said. You know, sometimes for a shy person to loosen up and to, you know, really be more open or extroverted, there needs to be an outer source, someone else coming to them and motivating them to be more extroverted, you know. You have to dig deep, you have to do something as a third person in order to activate another person and to reveal their f uh, full potential you know sometimes even potential they m they themselves may not be aware of that they have it and um also sometimes i guess you could also interpret this as you know you have to dig deep in order to find out everything that is hidden and maybe even purposely uh hidden you know Tiefe Brunnen muss man graben, wenn man klares Wasser will. Dick, um, deep, da, da, da. deep wells must be dug if you want clear or fresh water. You know, um, very thought-provoking song in a way, and I really, really appreciate that. My seven-year-old son loves that song and tries to sing along to the refrain. Uh, refrain, that is. Uh, that is really cool. You know, it's and also. It's, you know, lyrically speaking, there are much more explicit Rammstein songs. For instance, partially also Mann gegen Mann, the song before this. Rosenrot is very, it's very poetic, but it's, 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 it's not explicit, you know. It doesn't have anything offensive in it, I don't think so. Um, did you do this kind of stream for German anime intros already? Just asking because I'm listening to it right now. <laughs> no, actually not, but that's a cool idea. Uh, I may consider doing that at some point. We'll see. Uh, that is a cool idea. Thanks, Dom. Um, anyway, that is that. Let's continue with song number four, which you might mistake or confuse with another similar English term but it doesn't have anything to do with it. Because it means, or, no, well, let's talk about that after the song. Let's first listen to it. Spring, song number four on Rosenrot. Let's listen to it in drei, zwei, eins, play. Oops, there it is. Sorry, fresh start, fresh st because I basically clicked the wrong song. Sorry, 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 everyone. Didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Let's listen to Spring, song number four, properly now, by Rammstein in three, two, one, play. It's very 
mysterious. I love that. You know, the synth pads in Rammstein songs, really unique all this, every single time on all the albums. And this is very, you know, storytelling singing. It's basically speaking, speak singing. That's actually a heavy song, also lyrically speaking, but I'm going to talk about that later after the song's finished. But the, the riff, once again, you know. Love this chorus melody. Also another one of those Rammstein songs which focuses on a single, maybe three words at a max, hook line, you know. Mein Herz brennt, ich will, du hast, and here, spring. But it works, you know. This is really heavy. That's a really crazy song in a way. And it fits that the the riff is really, you know, dragging in a way, really going in waves basically. Considering the song's topic <laughs> love the choir
<laughs> and stop. That was Springen by Rammstein, song number four on the album. And now that I think about it, it's actually really fitting that this song features a choir. Because at this point in the song, and just in general regarding the topic, which also deals with death, you know, disclaimer, um, and suicide, disclaimer, or is it murder, disclaimer, who knows? Um, you know, someone jumping or falling from a bridge and basically, you know, it's implied that that person basically dies when it when they fall down. And because, you know, death and maybe uh, mourning and, you know, grieving. And I guess that is sort of underlined by using a choir in a way, maybe. But maybe that's just me. That is something that came to my mind right now. Um, anyway, spring doesn't have anything to do with the English spring, the season, you know. Because spring in German is actually, um, you know, a demand. You might say, die Aufforderung, singular, die Aufforderungen, plural, the demand. You demand someone to jump, because that is basically it. Spring, jump, you know. People want to see you jump, or someone jump. And it's really interesting, maybe I'm getting this wrong, because I haven't listened to this song in ages, actually, even though it's really good. Uh, and really thought-provoking as well. I think there is a certain perspective shift, I guess you could argue at least, because at the beginning of the song it sounds like, you know, people are standing, you know, on the ground and above them there is a high bridge. And they see someone standing on that bridge, looking down. And at first, the way it's told, I guess it seems that that person willingly, willingly wants to jump down the bridge. They want to commit suicide. However, throughout the song and in later parts of the song, to me it feels like it sh the, the perspective shifts and changes. Because now, or you know, in the latter half of the song, it feels like the people on the ground actually force that person up there to jump down to give them some spectacle, to give them something worthwhile, you know, in big quotation marks. Um, they basically, you know, the, the, the group of people down there, they basically seem to long for sensation. And they basically want that person to commit suicide for their own pleasure. Because they then they can actually witness something like that and then they can say, oh, I witnessed someone, you know, dying and committing suicide. That, it, what it's, that is what it seems like to me, which makes the song even more profound when you think about it and twist it, you know, in a way. And that is also why I mentioned, you know, that dragging, prope propelling guitar riff and the rhythm of the riff because it's, you know, it's, it's very, someone is, the, it's basically the increasing amount of pressure that the group of people seem to put on that person up upon the bridge. And then we also notice, because there's another shift, the lyrical eye changing to the person on the bridge and their thoughts. And they go, you know, I, I was just standing here and I wanted to witness uh, the dusk, you know, the sun uh, set. And I want to see that. And, you know, that is all I wanted to do. But then the people demand that that person should jump down. And someone is even, and that is basically the aggressive climax of the song, lyrically speaking, someone even comes up upon the bridge to that person standing there and kicks that person in the back. Which, you know, is supposed to make them tremble and fall. So this is a pretty, this is a pretty hefty song, lyrically speaking, you know, not gonna lie. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's, and I don't mean that in a glorifying way whatsoever, but I know you know that.
but in a way it is impressive because it is such a delicate topic yet the song deals with it in many facets and it also basically i guess you could argue it basically also criticizes people that want to see someone else suffer for their own pleasure and there are many other contexts in which something like that happens you know and it's also you know maybe people don't want to see other people suffer in the situation that i'm going to talk about but it's similar and it may be slightly related to when you drive on the highway and you see an accident on the other on the other uh, lane you know and you drive slower and slower purposely because you want to take a look at what happened even though you know you're not really supposed to do that because it's disrespectful in a way and but you're doing that for your own pleasure and for your own you know to basically satisfy your own curiosity in a way that is basically what it is all about you know to be a voyeur voyeurism um i guess i it's it could be slightly related i don't know i don't know if you know what i i want to say with this and where i want to go with this but it's it's an interesting and as you can see a thought-provoking song really 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 well done you know basically a piece of art um so once again, spring means jump, you know, it's a demand. People demand the person to jump down. And the infinite form is springen, to jump. And fitting to that, you know, that ex expectation um, from the crowd, uh, the song says, Enttäusch mich nicht, spring für mich. Spring ins Licht. Do not disappoint me. You know, jump for me in the crowd. Jump for us, the crowd. Jump into the light, you know. Jump into your death, basically. Um, that is... Oh, boy. That is really... Really, really crazy. Till's voice reminds me of a walk in the dark and when his pitch goes higher it's like the sun is rising yeah basically you you know that scene in the first the matrix movie uh, toward the end when neo and trinity are flying toward the uh, machine city and then you know everything's dark and they have to evade uh, the, the the bullets and everything and the cannons the bombs thrown against them and then they rise up and up and up and then they you know, they break through the clouds and everything is peaceful and bright and, you know, it's basically a paradise in heaven. And then they jump down. That is what I think about when uh, something like, you know, like a polyphone uh, double layered vocal line like that happens. Harmony vocals, basically. Um, alles klar, Dom. Kein Problem. Um... Also, aha, I see. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in, though, Dom, and uh, see you next time around. Would be awesome. Thanks for checking this out. It's appreciated. Much, actually. Much appreciated. So, without further ado, let's move on to song number five. Wo bist du? Wo bist du? Where are you? You know? Question you could ask. Because why not? When someone is, you know, missing or you can't find someone, someone is hidden or hiding. Wo bist du? Let's listen to that song in 3, 2, 1, los. I haven't really listened to this in, a, in years, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sudden drop is awesome. Also, what I really like about this album and the previous album is its symphonic character. Sadly, Rammstein don't do that anymore, you know, so often with strings, string arrangements and choirs. But I always love that about their music.
I really like the electronics here, the synths. Something different once again. You know, Flake really manages to come up with a different synth sound in each song and on each album. And that's really impressive in its own right. And also these bright synths, they basically are clipping, you know. This is similar, the synth sound in this bridge to Keine Lust, which I also really like as a bridge because it has that ah, almost harsh synth sound, which is a nice contrast to the guitars and everything. And stop. That was Wo bist du? Where are you? And it's it's strange with this one in a way because even though I also like it quite a lot, I also feel like it's a bit uneventful. Maybe that is a a good term. It's it's quite repetitive. And I like it, but you know, the, the melody itself is great, but I think, I don't know. I don't want to sound, you know, as like someone who knows it better and everything, because that is not what I want to go with this or where I want to go with this. But I still feel like knowing Till and what he can deliver, lyrically speaking, I think he could have done more with this, with these lyrics. Um, you know, it's basically, or it seems to be about a person that was in a relationship with someone and then they broke up. At least that is what I picture in my head when I listen to this. And now the lyrical eye wants to look for that previous partner, you know, that that person again. And um, because they also say, so allein will ich nicht sein. I don't want to be so or this so alone basically i don't want to be so alone um berangeri says uh, you're right but i think it illustrates the obsession that runs through the song yes 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 and don't get me wrong it's not a bad song you know just in comparison with other songs by rammstein and also on this album i feel it's i still feel it's a little lackluster to, gotta be honest um and it's <sighs> It, what I in, what I found interesting though is toward the end of the song in the last chorus I think it was um, the lyrical eye says something along the lines of you know ich schlafe ein mit einem Messer I fall asleep with a knife which might imply that that lyrical eye actually has bad intents you know intentions uh, regarding finding their lost partner because they are so alone and so desperate. And they have gotten to that point that even though, you know, they still want to find that pe person again, but they may actually also turn against them and harm them because they broke up, you know, and that relationship isn't intact anymore. I don't know. Um, the simplicity of Wo bist du might be more appealing when it's not your mother tongue, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um... Maybe, maybe, maybe. So once again, it means, where are you? Oops. Wo bist du? 
Wo bist du? Wupp. Na. So. Um, and what I just said is, so allein will ich nicht sein. I don't want to be that alone or so alone. Which basically sums up the whole song. Um, yeah. Once again, uh, the drop at the beginning I really liked because it's so sudden and quite unexpected and it works well. And also the synths, you know. Once again, uh, I have to stress that I really like the more symphonic side of Rammstein during this phase in their career with Reise Reise being quite symphonic and Rosenrot being quite symphonic and also partially uh, Liebe ist für alle da. But especially these two albums right here, uh, Reise Reise and Rosenrot, the sister albums, you know, because they were both um, recorded at the same time in the same sessions and then they became sister albums to one another. First Reise Reise was released and one year later in 2005 this album Rosenrot was released. Um, more about that later though. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, that's I guess that's basically all I can really say about Wo bist du, to be honest. Um, it's a fine song, you know, I, I like the the tonality of it, the arrangement and everything but it doesn't if i had to rank the songs on this album from you know my most favorite to the least favorites it wouldn't be it wouldn't it may not be the least favorite i don't know but it 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 wouldn't rank you know on in the first place either um i don't know Anyway, let's listen to song number six. Let's move on to the longest song title because, and actually, you know, the song title also reveals the English translation of the German part of the song title. Stirb nicht vor mir, don't die before I do. By Rammstein and, what's her name again? Charlene Spiteri, the woman singing along here. And let's listen to it in drei, zwei, eins play and spoiler alert i love this song and i think it's one of the most underrated rammstein songs ever and i guess many people may not like it because it's a ballad and everything and it's quiet and who but i couldn't care less it has a great melody great progression great harmonies and everything and it's something else you know something different again Da, da, da. You know, for those little details alone regarding the vocal arrangement, it's just classy. One of my favorite Rammstein ballads, actually. <laughs> Love it. Does she, does she sing in a band? I actually forgot about that. But I like her singing as well. Stirb nicht vor mir. Stirb nicht. 
love the little ad lib there. That's a nice contrast, you know, the really aggressive till and then Carrots and Licht. It's a lovely song and stop that was stirb nicht vor mir don't die before i do by rammstein and charlene spiteri <sighs> what a lovely ballad right i mean i know that people dislike this song some rammstein fans dislike this song and on the one hand i get why because it is not what they want from rammstein in the first place because I could be wrong about that, but my general impression about the average Rammstein fan is that they want the really heavy and, doom doom, you know, stomping like, marching like metal songs by Rammstein. And they're great, you know, those songs are great and they are well known for those songs. But that doesn't mean that every single song has to be like that. Because to me, personally, that would be boring, to be honest. And I like when Rammstein do something else here and there when they have a ballad or like a half ballad going on. And because once again, you know, in terms of the album as a continuum and as a whole, as a homogenous, um, as a homogenous piece of art, that's basically telling a story throughout the songs and the album as a whole. I love that there, or when there are dynamics, for instance, with this song, um, stirb nicht vor mir. Don't die before I do. Um, it's an interesting song. And you know what? I'm actually not too certain what this is specifically about. Because Till ma mentions, you know, um, he basically, or like the lyrical eye when Till is singing, basically mentions that they witness certain, you know, um, houses that are covered in snow and you know uh, they see dark windows with a candle uh, on the window pane and everything you know it's a very thought-provoking and melancholic mood that it evokes uh, and or that is evoked here um, and Charlene Spiteri you know the female lyrical eye um, then again says i don't know who you are i know that you exist uh which is interesting because at first you could ex you know get the impression early on in the song that it is about maybe older people like an older older couple and one person doesn't want the other person to die before them you know and it's basically a, some kind of a love letter and an affirmation of loyalty and but it 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 also has a sort of abstract and metaphysical component to it with what charlene spiteri sings here because you know i don't know who you are i know that you exist maybe just thinking about that wow that would be heavy actually maybe this song mm, also is about um what what is it in english actually demence alzheimer alzheimer you know alzheimer 
Alzheimer disease and everything. Um, dementia. Okay. Um, maybe. It just just occurred to me. Maybe I'm you know getting this totally wrong here, but it's hmm, I don't know. Um, the counter melodies are so great, yes. And she's from Texas, apparently. Or is the band called Texas? I don't know. Um, it's not my favorite, but I appreciate the song for what it is. Uh, right, it's not bad. Far from it. It's just a little bit different ballad or heart uh, stuff, though I can... Uh, so I can complain. Um, Valas Nighty, hi! Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hello, nice to see you live. Thanks for interesting videos. All good for you. Thank you very much for saying that. That is very kind of you and much appreciated, of course. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, yeah, once again, I think going on the record, you know, uh, for the record, I think this song is one of the most underrated Rammstein songs. Simply put. And one of the best Rammstein ballads. <laughs> you know. And now to something completely different but before maybe you know ich warte hier is a very obvious line that i could translate as well ich warte hier i'm waiting here you know which is what till sings at the beginning of the chorus ich warte hier. i really wonder what this song is about but i you know thinking of dementia and you know alzheimer's disease and everything <sighs> And maybe, you know, a couple that knew each other, but they they still know somehow subconsciously that they belong to one another, but they don't really know actively because of their disease. Maybe, hmm. maybe I'm totally off the track. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's uh, listen to something completely different. Spoiler alert. Song number seven, Zerstören. Oh yeah, oh boy. Buckle up, you know, because it's gonna get heavy. This is Zerstören in 3, 2, 1, <laughs> play. And the beginning is awesome. What? Very unexpected. Very tribal. Love this song as well. Because it really has that... It, it captures that aggressiveness, you know, that senseless aggressiveness towards everything and the need to destroy. And I love this riff coming up. Schutt und Asche legen, zerreißen, zerschmeißen, zerpflücken. Ich gehe am Garten Zaunen lang, wieder spüre ich diesen Drang. Ich muss zerstören. Doch es darf nicht mehr gehören. Nein, nein. Nein.
This is a total banger. And a nice little melodic break. And double bass. And I love this section right here. Because it basically musically expresses what this song is all about. Destroying, you know, and evoking chaos. Z and A Z V O. Hi, thanks and yes. And that was Zerstören by Rammstein, song number seven of 11, Rhyme Rhyme. You gotta be honest, from pretty much all the songs we've listened to so far, this one is one of my favorites, definitely. And also it's one of my top songs on the album, personally speaking. Because it's so, it's wreaking havoc, you know, it's, 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 it delivers what it says and what the title suggests. Sometimes I feel like, don't really have a, an example right now off of the top of my head, but I, you know, maybe you know that as well. There are certain songs, when you read the song's title, you have a certain imagery in mind that comes up and that, gives you sort of like expectations on what that song should sound like or may sound like, you know. And this song's title, Zerstören, to destroy something, it basically tells you, okay, well, this is going to be, or this may potentially be a really aggressive song and this may wreak havoc, you know. It's, 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 whew. and it is. It delivers. It delivers exactly that. And, you know, uh, it fulfills its promise, basically. Its self-given promise. And that is what I appreciate on its own. I also really like the energy of this song, you know. And the slightly... It's not dissonant, really, but it's it's really morbid in a way. The, the tonal quality, the uh, harmonic progression of the song and the, the chords that uh, are used, especially in the chorus, you know, uh, really. And also this contrast with Doch es darf nicht mehr gehören. You know, the Ich muss, yeah. The low and then the high. Uh, that basically, the high part that basically breaks through the cloud 
and the sky, the dark sky. Um, and that's also interesting because this, the the um, the chorus actually says, "Ich muss zerstören." I need to destroy. It's basically an addiction of the lyrical eye to destroy things. And throughout the song, and also toward the end of the song, they say and mention various ways to destroy something. You know, zerhacken to to hack something into pieces, to cut something into pieces, to trash something into pieces. Um, and, you know, different ways to destroy something, basically. However, there's, you know, that person needs to destroy all and everything, with the exception of their own belongings. And that is basically the twist in the chorus. You know, it's, and that also tells me that, um, you know, it seems to be sort of like an addiction for them. They have the, the urge the unstoppable urge to destroy things from other people, but they very well know that they they don't want to destroy their own stuff, you know. They don't want to do that. And I like that contrast. It's really cool. Uh, ich muss zerstören. I need to destroy. Doch es darf nicht mir gehören. But it mustn't be mine. Mm -mm, no way. It mustn't be mine. Doch es darf nicht mir gehören. It's it's this is such a cool song and this is such a prototypical Rammstein song also not just in terms of um, the um, how should I put it in terms of the music you know but also in terms of the lyrics because many people might might associate Rammstein with you know harsh vocals and everything is aggressive and dark and this song is like that yes it is <laughs> so um zerstören to destroy ich muss zerstören doch es darf nicht mir gehören love it uh Oops. Ah, love it. I just love it. It's it's a nice contrast to Don't Die Before I Do and everything, you know. <laughs> I love your explanation. I had a basic idea of the song, but I love it even more now. <laughs> Thank you very much for saying that. Call me Fat Jesus. Um, once again, that is much appreciated. If I can help you get a better understanding of these songs and what they could be about. Of course, sometimes, you know, even though it's my mother tongue, you know, German is my mother mother tongue, certain songs are still open to interpretation, of course, you know, because they have certain, like, double layers and they have certain ambiguities going through them. So, yeah. The lyrical eye basically gets off on the violence. Yes. Yes. They are really violent. So that person, in a way, <laughs> it, I don't think it has anything to do with this song, but uh, you could see the next song and the song's title, Hilf mir, help me, as a connection to Zerstören, because at first the lyrical eye destroys someone else's belongings, and then that person says, Hilf mir, help me, you know. Uh, certainly doesn't have anything to do with that song there's no connection but you know for the sake of it why not let's listen to hilf mir by rammstein song number eight in drei zwei eins play and i can't i don't know if i can actually remember this song oh yes i can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. haven't listened to this in a while though I love the, the spaces in between the arrangement because that tells me they have a sense for, you know, energy and to pull and push with the music.
Hmm. Interesting. There's a reference to the self-titled album's cover, The Match, Das Streichholz. Just really crazy in a way as well. <laughs> I can't remember this section of the song though. Wow. And stop! Wow, okay. Hilf mir bei Rammstein. Actually, totally forgot about that ending. <laughs> As you may be able to tell. Um, this is another quite sad song. It's quite tragic when you think about it. Because, and that is what I meant by saying, you know, there's a certain reference not only to the self titles or the self-titled album's cover, you know, that match you're seeing there, Das Streichholz. A cautionary tale, yes, that is basically what it's all about. Um, it tells of the dangers of playing with fire and underestimating the power of fire and getting into a situation where no one can help you really. And at the end of the day, because you have played with fire too much and you have been very you know, uh, naive. You die because of that. You burn to death. And then your soul ascends to the sky, your spirit. You know, that is basically what the song mentioned when I said, wow, uh, throughout the song, later part, I think it was. Uh, this is heavy. This is really heavy.
lyrically speaking, I mean, you know, and musically, of course, as well. Um, wow. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, one of the most prominent lines is Das Feuer liebt mich. The fire loves me. Which makes sense, you know, in terms of what I just said. Das Feuer liebt mich. So Hilf mir is help me. And Das Feuer liebt mich. The fire loves me. However, the fire loves that lyrical eye way too much because at the end of the day, as I just said, they die because of it. Because they played with fire too much. And they were a bit too careless, you know. <sighs> yeah, it's based on a tale by Heinrich Hoffmann, I believe. Wow, okay, didn't know that. And Carl Creighton said, Schwarz on their new album is like a perfection of this song. Yeah, in a way, they wrote crazy stuff for children back in the days. They certainly did. Yes, <laughs> they certainly did. Um, Heinrich Hoffmann, Wilhelm Busch, you know, they all have really creepy children's stories. Which I guess, you know, had a... You could go on and, and that would be a topic in its own right. But just in general, many of these really old children's stories, you know, child stories, um, they are cautionary tales in the sense of they warn or they are supposed to warn children of doing something they might regret and that is not supposed, that is not okay to do, you know, morally or socially okay. Uh, for instance, there is a really, I actually made a video about that, uh, there is a story by, I think it's Wilhelm Busch, the thumb sucker, you know, der Däumling, der Daumenlutscher, uh, in the, uh, I think the book is titled Der Struvelpeter, which basically is really drastic, and it actually freaked me out as a kid when I read that somewhere. Um, it's, it's a little boy that is sucking his thumb and keeps sucking that, and, you know, everyone tells him to stop that and because, you know, it's immature and everything, and people don't, you don't do that. And um, at the end of the day, they actually, well, the, the end of the story basically is that there is the, I think it's the Struvelpeter, like that person with a long pair of scissors. And they cut off that boy's thumb and he can't really you know suck it anymore that is i think it was written like in i think in the 19th century or so maybe early 20th century even i don't know but um i think 19th though it that is stuff they wrote for children back in the day so they would behave properly behave You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's that. Uh, Hilf mir, yeah, it's, um, even though, you know, it's uh, drastic lyrics and everything, it is not one of my favorite songs, to be honest, um, once again. It's, you know, it. I could say, even though I don't mean it like that, but I could say it's quite forgettable in comparison to other songs by the band and to other songs on this album. And I don't know. It's I wouldn't have missed the song if it hadn't been on this album, to be honest. Uh, it's it's good in its own right, in a way. You know, it's it once again not a bad song, but I I it just doesn't give me too much or you know that much compared to other songs and what other songs give me in terms of, you know, emotions and drive a certain feeling, a certain vibe. For instance, Zerstören, you know, it's a perfect example of achieving that. And Stirb nicht vor mir, the complete contrast to that, also achieving that, touching me in a way and making me think about things. And um, even though, you know, lyrically it's really impressive, of course. Um, but yeah, that's... That's just me. Anyway, 
let's continue with a song warning even though it's spanish uh it's quite explicit um <laughs> so just so you know um anyway let's continue with that one song number nine te quiero puta uh by rammstein in drei zwei eins play I have to restart the song because somehow I didn't have any sound. Didn't change anything. I'm sorry, guys. Wasn't my fault. I didn't have any sound. So let's restart this and let's listen to Te Quiero Puta by Rammstein in 3, 2, 1, play. Now it works. I faintly remember this. Vaguely. Faintly? Wait, vaguely. <laughs> you know what I mean. I love the the breast section. Dab, dab, deep, dab, dab. song oh I, I understood that un dos tres pero means but I think mas 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 a lot of things I think has a very unique vibe this song you have to give it that <laughs> oh boy some palm muting couldn't actually remember that section but it's cool I think those are the putas singing That's a nice ending. I like that. And that was Te Quiero Puta by Rammstein. And stop. Yeah. Okay. Song number nine. Um, 
a fun little song, you know. Uh, doesn't hurt anyone. I mean, lyrically speaking, I guess it, in a way it you could argue that it does because it's speaking in a pejorative way about people, I guess. Because, coming to the translation of the Spanish title, of course, Te quiero puta translates to I love you, bitch. And, uh, or in German, Ich liebe dich, Schlampe. Or Ich liebe dich, Hure. Both very pejorative, both very slang terms, you know, for a prostitute. And, uh, you know, even though, you know, die Schlampe, uh, singular, die Schlampen, plural, the bitch, uh, you could also say that as a as an insult to someone, like a woman, you could, you shouldn't. Just because you could doesn't mean you should. Right? Just saying that. Um, but to give you some perspective here. Um, so it is, it seems to be a love letter to horse in Spanish. Because they can. I wonder what the, you know, the origin of this song is what where the origins lie here uh, maybe there is a story behind this maybe not i don't know i think it's sort of a sister song to uh moscow on reise reise the sister album because it's not a completely um russian song you know a song in russian but it has russian parts in it and counting you know and everything so this is basically the pendant to that uh and even though I like its uniqueness, I gotta be honest, um, it isn't one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's fun for what it is. Is it a song I would listen to on repeat, or is it a song I would listen? I would want to listen to all day every day. No, it's fun to listen to it once or twice every now and then, but. That's about it, to be honest, you know. It's not a, once again, don't confuse that with me saying, you know, or if as if I would be saying, um, it's a bad song, because it isn't a bad song. <laughs> you know, that is not what it, this is about. I, I'm just stating that for me personally, yeah, it's, it's a song, I, I enjoy it when it's playing, you know, I'm not skipping it, I wouldn't skip it, but it's, I don't know. It sort of feels like a bonus track to me, uh, in a way. And nothing against bonus tracks. Um, I know no Spanish, but I heard that it might be an affectionate way to address close female friends in some Spanish-speaking countries as well, but I don't know for sure. Interesting. Like the swing of it. Yeah, it, it has a nice, it definitely has a nice string. S swing. Uh, another personal favorite, uh, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> Um, as Carl Creighton uh, says earlier, Hilf mir might appeal more to non-native speakers. And, uh, you know, that is the beauty of languages and that is the beauty of art at the end of the day, I think. It, it may make a difference if you're listening to Rammstein as a native speaker or as someone who doesn't speak German or doesn't really understand everything in German. Maybe a little bit here and there, but not everything. Maybe it makes a difference. And maybe it's the other way around with this song, with, you know, native or Spanish native speakers, as opposed to Germans or as opposed to English speakers, you know, English speaking people. Maybe, but that's the beauty of it in a way. So, you know, I highly, and I mean, you know, just in general, um, even though it's not one of my favorite songs, I really have to give them credit for doing a Spanish song in the first place. It's not their mother tongue, you know, it's not their native language. It's out of their comfort zone in a way. And alone, you know, for that alone, I have to give them credit. So that is that is really cool in its own right. Um, yeah. That is basically that. Uh, oh, oh, well, I can actually provide you with the translation I just mentioned. Te quiero puta means that in German and that in English. 
and it's die Schlampe, singular, die Schlampen, plural, the bitch or whore, as a slang term. You should not use it, kids, don't use it. And neither, you know, die Hure, singular, die Huren, plural, the whore, which is also means slut, you know, uh, whore, which is, it's a very pejorative term, I guess, in a way. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, second to last song, penultimate song, Feuer und Wasser. And I'm really curious about this one because I think I vaguely remember this one. And in another video that I did, I don't know which one it was actually, I actually said that, you know, when I, I, th I think I was thinking of songs, of Rammstein songs that I know, you know, I know they exist, but I don't really know what they sound like because I couldn't remember them because they didn't really affect me in any way. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm remembering things wrong, but I can't really... I think I can only really like slightly and vaguely remember this song at all. Anyway, uh, let's check it out. And you know what? This is the first time of me listening to this song in, I guess, many years. <laughs> because I haven't really listened to this album in many years in total from front to back, you know. So let's do it. This is Feuer und Wasser bei Rammstein, song number 10 in... 3, 2, 1, play. I think that is the song, the melodic progression that I remember. Yes. Remember this from the Reise Reise making of. I like the mood of the song, the atmosphere. Very intimate. Sort of reminding me of songs like Nebel, you know, similar mood. I knew it.
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's a rather long fade out for Rammstein. And stop. That was Feuer und Wasser by Rammstein. And I have to give the song credit um, in the lyrical sense of, you know, I mean, the melody itself also is pretty nice. You know, it's pretty fragile in a way, you know. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to say is if I actually got it correctly um, or the way I, at least the way I interpret this is it is one of the most impressive actually um, ways to combine expressing sexuality and you know erotic intercourse and everything you know one a, a man touching a woman and everything and you know um, and combining that with a certain poetic expression um expressiveness I'm, i mean a certain poetic expressiveness and a certain poetic style um prose in a way you know a certain lyrical quality almost poetic um with metaphors you know fire and water i guess Re resembling or representing two genders, you know, man and woman, male, female, and, you know, all that. Uh, I guess it could be about that, you know, because Feuer und Wasser translates to fire and water for das Feuer, singular, die Feuer, plural, the fire, and das Wasser, which is mostly singular, actually, water. It's a yeah, it was it was a nice song. It was a nice song. Gotta say. Would it become one of my new favorite Armstein songs? No. But uh <laughs> it's uh yeah. Feuer und Wasser kommt nicht zusammen. That's actually, you know thinking about it, it's actually wrong grammatically speaking, because it's two things, and it should be Feuer und Wasser kommen nicht zusammen, you know, instead of kommt, because because kommt is uh, singular, you know, and kommen would be plural. So, um, but I guess it also has um, poetic, or maybe it also underlines what this line actually says and expresses. Fire and water do not come together. They do not, you know, join in a way and mix well because they are different of course and um, because that is maybe they actually used the singular form which may that's just a clever guess um, that may highlight that you know one they are drawn to one e another in a way but they when they actually come together it's difficult, you know, for both to survive or to for both to live freely in their own state, you know, because, of course, water uh, extinguishes a flame, you know, in that sense. Maybe that also is a reference to, you know, coming back to sexuality in a way, dominance, you know, and uh, superiority, inferiority and everything. Maybe it has to do with that. Uh, I could see that fit. I guess um, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, so that is what I meant by saying, you know, I have to give them credit for thought-provoking lyrics. So, hmm, yeah. You have significantly raised my interest in that song. I could be totally wrong about this, though. That is just my interpretation, you know. Um, <laughs> It, it certainly has, you know, it, it certainly has a sexual connotation in a way. I'm sure of that. But, um, you know, maybe other people might interpret it differently. I don't know. Um, is that the, his way of saying they are the same? Yeah, in a way. 
in a way, I guess, ying, ying yang stuff. In a, you know, th but it, it's 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 sort of difficult. <laughs> it is difficult because, you know, even though they they are drawn to one another, I guess they also have elements that, like a magnet, you know, with uh, when you have two of the same poles near each other, they actually push each other away. So I don't know. I guess that would be an analogy that comes to mind here. Um, all I know is uh, no small fee to make my uh, make me sustain my attention for uh, five minutes like that. Most songs that long bore me. Really? Okay. There are a lot of cool songs that are way longer than five minutes, though. Uh, but I know, you know, I guess... It's also a matter of, you know, getting used to listening and to really actively listening to music. And what I mean by that is not just listening to music play that's played in the background, but actively listening to music and focusing on the music. Because then I think when you really do that and you're not distracted by this or something else, um, you actually have a chance to really get into the music to dig deep you know and to appreciate every single detail there is it's hard nowadays because we're distracted by so many things every day social media and the internet and whatever um, but it's not impossible and i try to do that with you know the bands that i like and new albums by those bands you know usually i really you know i'm, I'm basically downloading the album that I bought, you know, via, uh, or like, I'm, I'm streaming it basically. Um, and then I, when I have it here, or when I, how should I put it? Um, I basically try to sit down here, you know, in my office, uh, in my studio, basically, or on my couch in the living room, and, you know, with nothing that distracts me and I'm only listening to the music. And, yeah, that is that is my personal favorite way of listening to music. I'm a huge lover of music, you know, uh, music is my life in a way. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I can still do that. But I also get when people can't really do that out of, you know, distraction reasons and everything because it's tough to uh, resist that sometimes you know to be resilient against that i guess and it's even tougher nowadays than it was like 20 30 years ago with no social media and no internet and everything but i you know that leads to a whole another topic interesting but not the topic of today today's video today's live stream so let's listen to the last song of the album, Ein Lied, a song. That is the translation of this. In 3, 2, 1, play. And I don't think I remember this song. At least I couldn't really tell what it sounds like from the top of my head. I don't remember this song at all. <laughs> I've got to be honest.
And that was Ein Lied by Rammstein and the album Rosenrot in its entirety. Stop. Okay. Last song on the album. Um, hmm. It leaves me wanting more. I mean, it's a fitting outro song, a fitting last song because of its, you know, really calm nature and everything. But it doesn't really grab me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really, really sorry because it might be your favorite tune and that is totally all right, of course, but it, the lyrical content is basically, you know, interestingly speaking though, um, funnily actually, uh, is exactly what I just said before I played the song, you know, music is my life, music is Im important to me, music uh, m makes me happier or makes me feel better when I'm sad and everything. And this song basically is a testament to that because it really tells that, you know. There's a line that I really liked actually, which is, wir sind die Diener eurer Ohren, you know. We are the servants of your ears. We serve you and we provide you with music and music being an antidote, like medicine that you can take in a way. Mu emotions conveyed through music and everything. Maybe also music as a distraction. Uh, and music in the sense of, you know, it helps you to cope with sadness, to cope with loneliness, to cope with boredom, whatever, you know. And in that sense, it's a very cool song. But musically, I don't know. It's it's minimalistic and nothing against that. But it's it's it just doesn't it just doesn't grab me. It just doesn't grab me. I'm, I'm that's the only way I can put it. And I think coming to the overall album review of Rosenrot, I think. This is one of the reasons why also back in the day when I listened to this album for the first, second, third, fourth time, whatever. That is one of the reasons I think, knowing me and how I tick and everything, that I, or why I don't think it's one of Rammstein's stronger albums. Because, you know, as much as the first impression of an album is important, to really, you know, get a sense for the album as a whole or to really get you going, get you interested in, you know, you want to listen to more, you know. That is why the the opening song, the, the opener is so important, I feel, when it comes to albums. But also the closing song is equally important because if it doesn't leave you with a satisfied feeling, there is a chance... And even though it might be unfair, you know, when you um, actually take a look at the album as a whole, as an entirety, you know, as an entity in a way as well, it may leave you dissatisfied and missing something. And gotta be honest, this album leaves me dissatisfied. It, it really does. Um, I mentioned that at a, I think, I think that was in the, I think I actually made a video about, you know, me ranking all Rammstein albums from worst to best. Of course, from a very personal standpoint, you know, per point of view, of course. Um, and I think, you know, this one wasn't at the top of the list, definitely not. <laughs> and I have to be honest with you. Of, there are two ways to take a look at an album of a band. The first way is to look at it as a separate piece of art and work, you know, a separate work of art. The album as a unit, you know, a closed unit. And when I do that, I'm looking at the the songs here, um, there it's a st quite strong beginning actually. Benzin, Mann gegen Mann, Rosenrot, and maybe even Springen as well. 
And then there is another climax, quality-wise, for me personally, with Stirb nicht vor mir, don't die before I do, and Zerstören. But after that, you know, Hilf mir, Tikiro Buddha, Feuer und Wasser, and Ein Lied, they are okay songs. They are solid songs. Once again, don't get me wrong. Not totally disliking them, that's not the case, but they don't hold up against many other or most other Rammstein songs that I like. And that is basically, you know, two two thirds of this album are good to really good, you know, uh, partially. And, you know, Zerstören, um, Rosenrot, and Stirb nicht vor mir, Don't Die Before I Do, maybe my three favorite songs on the album. But one third of this album, and it's the complete latter half of the album, funnily enough, um, Hilf mir, Tikiro Buta, Feuer und Wasser, and Ein Lied, it just feels a little bit lackluster. I'm, I'm sorry. I really have to say the way I've, you know, I want to be honest with you uh, because I'm not a fan of, you know, praising something just for the sake of praising stuff because I know that many people, you know, there are many people watching my Rammstein videos that are total, you know, uber fans of Rammstein. Nothing wrong with that. I love the band as well, but I'm still critical. You know, I, when I don't like something, I say that. <laughs> And, um, It's it's nothing personal, and I don't want to, you know, how should I put it? Um, I don't want to discredit songs or people, favorite songs of people, you know, um, people's favorite songs. Uh, that's a better way to put it. Um, I don't want to do that. That's not the point. I just want to be authentic, and you know. That is one of the reasons why, and that is why I mentioned you can take a look at an album in two ways. As a separate unit, it is a solid to good album, but not more, to me personally. And compared, and that's the second way to look at an album, you know, comparing it to the other discography of the artist, to other albums by the artist especially around the same time period because you know it would be unfair to um, compare a current album you know like 20 even 30 almost 30 years into their career with their first album because they had a different mindset back then they were much younger they didn't have the budget for you know a big production and everything it just wasn't there so it's it would be unfair to compare that one by one but Compared to the its sister album, Reise Reise, once again, which was composed at the same time. All these songs were composed in the same session. I really feel like, you know, Reise Reise is one of my personal favorite Rammstein albums from start to finish. And this album, even though it's also it also has its strong, very strong moments, actually, it also has You know, there's light and there is darkness and shadows and gray areas. And I don't really have that with almost all the other Rammstein albums. There are some, you know, also when I listen to uh, Sehnsucht, which I know is uh, like a big fan favorite of many people, and I get why, because it was highly influential and everything, I still said in that album reaction that there are certain songs I think also in the latter half of the album, to be honest, um, which are okay to me personally, but which don't really move me. They don't really catch me in that sense, you know, the way other Rammstein songs and albums do. That's just the way it is. That being said, though, as I've said before, and I'm going to repeat that again as well, I think Rosenrot is a really solid album. Um, you know, um, what do you guys say about this, I wonder? Because that was my take on it, basically. Um, um, -ba 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 -bum. 
let me see. Uh, I think this song is a nice closer for the album. Yes, in a way it is because you know it it leaves you. Um, it, it's very calm, and that is like a common way also to end albums. It's either like a often at least I think it's either a very calm song like this one, or it's a very anthemic song. Uh, I don't know if you know the album Fortress by Alter Bridge. Uh, the last song on that album is the title track Fortress, which once again is very anthemic and very, you know, it gets everything together, all the different trademarks of the band's sound. And it really ends the album in a really impressive way, you know. And I, to be honest, I personally prefer those last songs as opposed to really calm ballads and everything. Um, I think this is where I fell out of touch with the band for a few years. Then someone told me to listen to radio and I'm back in love ever since. <laughs> Zerstörung is great, the beginning uh, to second half, but it isn't lived up to. Mm. First part's great. Yeah, it's, you know... I mean, that's basically all I can say about the album, really. Um, I don't want to repeat myself, of course, because there's no sense in doing that. But um, like I said before, um, Rosenrot, Stirb nicht vor mir, and Zerstören, easily my top three songs on this album. Even though I also like Benzin, I also like um, Mann gegen Mann, I also like Spring. And Wo bist du is okay. I could live without... Hilf mir, Tekiro Puta, Feuer und Wasser, and Ein Lied. Don't really care for them so much. Still also some really interesting things in them, as I've mentioned after each of those songs, but not enough to really get me, wow, wow that's a great Rammstein song, wow. Yeah, I guess there are many people that disagree with this, and what I just said, and I guess there are many people also that say Rosenrot is their favorite Rammstein album, which is legit, which is totally fine. You know, more power to you. Spreading the good vibes, not the bad ones, because there are more than enough bad vibes out there in the world. Anyway, um, that's just my take, you know. Okay, everyone, that was it. That was my album listening party for the Rammstein album Rosenrot. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm really looking forward to the next one. I don't know which album it's going to be. But um, yeah, stay tuned for more. And uh, feel free to watch my other 80 plus Rammstein related videos on my channel. There's a playlist with all of those videos. Um, you can find that on my channel. And um, yeah, I've also made over or almost 800 videos in total about the German language and culture. So if you're interested, if you're new to the channel, and you uh, stumble across my channel uh, with this video, basically. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, and you're interested in finding out more about the German language and culture with music like Rammstein um, or in, you know, other ways. Um, feel free to check out my channel. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for watching everyone in the live chat here, in the live stream that is... Um, that was much fun. Once again, you know, I really, really, really appreciate you guys being here. I really mean it. Um, it means a lot. And I also really want to thank everyone of you guys watching this on YouTube later on after the live stream because you couldn't make it or you didn't want to or whatever. I don't know. Even if you just watch, watch blah, blah, even if you just watched parts of it, uh, because it's a freaking long stream, I know. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. That is what I want to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a nice weekend and see you around. Definitely tune in next time, I'd say. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm your vlog, Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye-bye.